Hey, what's up everyone? This is Justin. First and foremost, I just want to wish all of you guys a happy Memorial Day. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. And to those who served, past, present, or thinking about going in the future, thank you for serving. So today I'm going to be talking about one of the movies that was on my top 10 most anticipated films of 2019, Brightburn. So Brightburn is directed by David Yurovsky, produced by James Gunn, and written by Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn. So either way, the whole creative team working on this film has worked with James Gunn in the past or is related to him one way or another. I was really happy with the production of this movie because I had no clue something like this was being made until they just randomly dropped the poster and trailer at the same time. I was just like, okay. I can get down with the premise of this movie. So the premise of this movie is a husband and wife living in a small town of Brightburn, Kansas, are trying to have a kid and not having much luck. The wife, played by Elizabeth Banks, swears she hears something and their whole house shakes. So they go outside and what do they see? A spaceship has landed in the forest. So they go out and inspect it and what do they find? A baby boy hidden in the spaceship. They consider it a blessing so they raise the kid and during the time when he's 11 or 12, he starts going through puberty, but this is a different kind of puberty. We got a superpower puberty. And I know if you're listening to this and you think, you know, that premise sounds really freaking familiar. Well, yeah, obviously it's just a rip off of Superman. I love how it fully embraces that. It's not shy at all to let you know that it's basically like a dark version of Superman. And if you were wondering, hell yeah, he's got all of Superman's powers. Heat vision, flying, super strength, he's bulletproof. Superman has it, this kid's got it. Basically, if Superman came to Earth and in his early teenage years, 12 years old, 13 years old, right around there, he's not that good actually. Quite the opposite. After watching this film, I was really happy because yeah, I thought of it as a dark type of superhero movie, but I didn't expect the level of gore and sheer horror in this film. Being a huge fan of Superman and Smallville and Man of Steel, I was, I was really happy to see an evil Superman story because I loved what they were doing in Man of Steel and uh, Batman vs. Superman. They were showing a different version of Superman. One that's kind of not perfect. He makes mistakes, but that's how his character is going to grow and become what we know. And with Venom, Venom came out and I, it was alright, but I was just really wanting a superhero movie to be R-rated, gritty, grounded, and also why I was looking forward to The New Mutants. A superhero movie with a horror vibe? I mean... I couldn't wait for something like that. So I really hope this movie paves the way and lets directors know it's okay to be dark and gritty. It's still going to make money. Granted, this movie underperformed at the box office, but it's got a low enough budget to where it's got weeks and weeks of being in theaters. It's only like, I think a six or seven million dollar budget. So it's got time to make that back and become a success. The runtime of this movie was perfect. It's an hour and a half long, I think maybe like an hour and 31 minutes. I love how it gets right to the point, it doesn't beat around the bush, and it's just gruesome, violent, and surprisingly satisfying because in a lot of movies like Smallville and Shazana just recently came out, the kids, if they're being picked on a school, don't really use their superpowers too much against bullies. And if they do, it's just to like tease them a little bit and scare them. But no, Brandon Breyer, the kid who's the villain or hero in this movie, he just dives right in and doesn't play around with that shit. All the kids at school just fear him. And I'm just like, yes, I'm, I mean, maybe I'm dark and demented for thinking that, but I just couldn't wait for him to unleash hell. And yes, of course, if you're going to have a superhero, Superman type film, his name, Brandon Breyer, I mean, Billy Batson, Peter Parker, Clark Kent. I mean, they all have to have similar sounding first letters and their first and last names. Come on now. I feel like this movie might actually bring horror fans who usually aren't superhero fans into the superhero genre because it's a dark and demented twist on all of these past superhero movies that are out there. And I know a lot of my friends who just completely hate superhero movies. They think they're doofy. They think they're corny, but this one's really gritty, horrific, grotesque, and I, I think they're gonna really get into this. People who probably won't enjoy this movie are super critical snobs who loved The Green Book, which I still love, um, The King's Speech, Moonlight, and all these other fantastically well-acted films. 
but they don't have the ability to just flick their brain off and enjoy something with a simple premise. I love this movie, plain and simple. It definitely delivered on what I was expecting and then more, surprisingly, I didn't know how that was possible. But again, for those who are wanting a fully R-rated movie, like if they wished Venom was R-rated or they were happy to see in Man of Steel, Superman snap Zod's neck and go to a dark place, you're gonna be really happy with this film. James Gunn and his crew did a great job. And oh yeah, there is a mid-credits scene, so stay to the mid-credits to see what's maybe to come at the end of this film. Regardless, go check this movie out if you want some dark, gritty, gruesome, superhero-type shit. 10 out of 10, guys.